Howdy folks, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am your host, the Mighty Bjorn. And today for you folks, got a bit of a Dungeons Dragons video because today I'm actually going to focus on medieval construction. Now, I'm mostly going to focus on your more common medieval construction because honestly, this video is going to be kind of a long video as it is and trying to also cram things like castles, temples, and chapels, things of that nature into this video is just going to take too much time. So I'm going to cover more complex construction such as castles, castle walls, and several types of defenses later. But right now, I'm just going to cover your more basic common types that you're going to run into. So, And this is just something to think about whenever you're designing your world, designing your medieval villages. And this is also primarily going to focus on medieval Europe. However, some of this does cross over to Japan as well or other parts of the world, which I'll get into as I'm discussing here today. Let's start off with some fencing first because the fencing is actually going to lead to a primer into other types of construction. So let's get into it. Now, one thing that did exist was iron bar fencing. Now, the thing is with iron bar fencing is it's going to be more along the lines of maybe something a duke would have around his residence or a high lord or lord in general. Uh, someone that's more wealthy, if you will. And that's because, well, first off, raw iron had to be mined, and then it had to be smelted and made into bars and construct constructed and so on and so forth. Uh, so it would be a very expensive endeavor to have iron bar fencing, but it is something that would have existed. It's Like I said, it's just a really expensive endeavor. Uh, this is something that could also be around a, maybe a, a, a temple or a monastery, but realistically, that's really about it. You're not going to see this around a commoner's or a peasant's residence. Now, another one you would, another type of fencing you would see is also wooden plank fencing, and I'm going to get into more about wooden plank, wooden plank construction and how wooden planks would have been made in the medieval period here in a little bit. But this is another type of fencing you would see. Now, you'd commonly see like a a small wooden plank fence maybe around maybe at like a around a residence fence as an entrance way uh that being said the fence may be constructed differently or it may be like a picket fence like we would have now it really wouldn't be too much different what comes down to is this is also another expensive endeavor though which i will like i said i'll get to why here in a bit as i, I get into house construction or home construction but wooden gates wooden planks used for gates that would be fairly common wooden planks used for fencing not so much but it would still be common enough that people would see it or at least your characters would see it when roaming around through a village or a town or even a city now it'd probably be more common in a city than say a village and also that would be based on the city's or village's resources, what they have, etc. So that's something to think about. Now, another thing you might see is you also might see wooden logs used for fencing. Not as often for fencing as you would see for like some type of defensive wall like you see here. Um, and actually, this is a quite complex defensive wall, but it is a good example of a wooden defensive wall that would be used actually around a castle believe it or not uh not all castles had stone defensive walls some actually had wood uh you might also find this around a village as well and this would be more a more common it'd be more commonly used as a defensive structure than it would be say around someone's residence let alone if it was some around someone's residence it probably wouldn't be quite as high as you see here these are actually quite tall timbers now the next one i want to talk about here is wa a waddle fence now what you do is you take larger timbers and kind of use them as stakes for framing uh they're about 18 20 inches apart and then branches are used as a weave and interwoven 
in between the timbers, as you can see here. Now, this was actually probably one of your more common fences that you would see. Uh, your commoners would have them. Your farmers would have them. A lot of people would have fences done in this method. And there's a reason why I'm covering this, too, is because this would also be used quite a bit for homes as well, which I'll get into more here in just a very little bit because that's actually the next section I'm going to be covering. Another way that this would be done, too, is also would be they would do it vertically instead of horizontally. Horizontally would be the more common because it's easier to work with. And this would be actually a quite easy construction. The resources would be quite common as they would use various different types of branches. Uh, it would be mostly greenwood when they make the fencing itself. Of course, the wood would dry out over time, and then they would just have to replace said pieces of fence that needs replaced. Um, they wouldn't treat it or anything that I'm aware of. I couldn't find anything that indicated to me that they would treat them or paint them or anything along those lines. They would just kind of age naturally over time. And this is, like I said, a more common method that they would use for construction. And actually, this method of fence construction would be so common, it would also cross over into home construction. Now, here you have what is called a wattle home, where they just use essentially the same method they would use for fencing, but make a home with it, as well as this does have a thatched roof, which I will get into roofing here towards the end of the video. But now, with all that being said, I would argue that something along these lines, where it's just wattle, it's probably more of a temporary home, uh, or it's going to be something more along the lines of in a warmer climate. You're not going to want to live in this in like a colder climate, like say in Germany in the wintertime, because the insulation is just nothing. Uh, it's going to let air flow through, no problem. But in a warmer, more tropical climate, per se, this would actually be just fine. And then what you have is wattle and daub. This is going to be your more constructed or, or more common construction that you're going to see in a medieval fantasy setting. And it doesn't matter if it's Europe or Japan. Even Japan, they had wattle and daub kind of construction. And actually, wattle and daub type of construction is a type of construction you can find all over the world, realistically. And you can actually still find wattle and daub construction to this day being used. It's nowhere near as common as it used to be because modern construction methods are, well, just better. But that being said, it's, it's, still, it's still common enough to, to mention that it's actually still being used and that this, this was the primary type of construction used in medieval Europe. Now, what you have here is you have timbers being used as support beams. You may or may not have timbers. It's going to be based on how complex the construction is. Now, obviously, if it's a two-story construction, it's going to be a bit more complex, which I'll get into here in a little bit. But... What essentially you do is, is you would make wattle fencing. Uh, and then you'd have your support timbers in between the wattle fencing if you're going to have support timbers. Uh, and then, so essentially you're making the wattle fence. And then what you're doing with it is, is you're covering it with mud. Uh, sometimes there'd be fecal matter in there, animal feces. Uh, there'd be hair. But mostly the, the primary ingredient is mud hay and water and essentially you'd have a good rich mix of of dirt uh and and water and then you just have some straw and the straw would act as a reinforcing agent especially once the mud dries so that is that is essentially how your walls would be made uh, the timbers could be various lengths, could be a little thicker. Not the timbers, sorry, the uh, the supports. Uh, now, with that being said, you're more comp. You could get more complex constructions, such as what you have here, 
Well, actually, this is still a fairly simple construction in itself, to be honest, uh, because you have wooden timbers and it's on a stone brick foundation. The foundation, looking at the photograph, I, I couldn't tell you for sure close up, but looking at it, it looks like it's a, a brick and mortar type construction. And then they build a wattle and daub house over top of the foundation. Now this, I would also guess that this building actually does have a basement, which is one reason why it has a stone foundation. Usually if there's a basement, it's also going to involve having some type of basement probably to be used as a cooler. So actually this is a great type of building you would see for say a tavern. Um, and then of course the, as you can see, there's various timbers. It'd be basically the equivalent of modern four by fours used as different support beams. Uh, as you can see, there's actually no windows and that's something I want to highlight for something a little bit later, but it would not be common for, it, you'd have windows, but there wouldn't be glass. Uh, the windows would be covered with shutters. The door would be also wooden planks. It would have floors. Uh, this also looks like it has some type of attic or storage area above, but essentially it is a single floor. It's a one floor building, it, you know, outside of a basement and kind of a storage area or what would be the attic. Now, the next type of structures that you would see that would be still fairly common would be log type structures or log homes. And, you know, we still have those to this day. Now they would still use something more like probably still kind of like daub to kind of fit in between the logs. So as they're, as they're stacking the logs up, they would be laying a layer of mud. Well, essentially daub or something along those lines to act as an insulator and then they would lay the next log on top of it while it's still wet. And that's to help prevent air from getting through the logs. Once again, though, as you can see here, there's no glass on the windows. There is windows. You do have a wooden plank door. Now, there's one thing I forgot to mention earlier about doors, and I'm going to mention it now since we got a really good look at a door. The doors are made purposely small. And the reason the theory is, is if the doorway is smaller, it's less air getting into the building. Yes, folks, that's my understanding of why the doors were actually built smaller at that time than they are now, because essentially doors couldn't be insulated. I really don't know how true that is, because essentially, typically, on a, a typical home, a peasant's home, you really wouldn't have glass on the windows. Uh, and, and essentially all you'd have is shutters. So, you know, the shutters don't really act much differently than the doors. Now, that being said, there wouldn't be many windows either into the, into the structure. Another one there would be is also wooden plank type structures. Once again, these would be used for homes. And this would be based on resources, what they have available and things of that nature. And that's because, well, you can take and make quite a few planks out of logs. The problem comes down to the amount of time it takes to make said wooden planks. It takes longer to make a wooden plank structure than it does to make essentially a log type structure. And that's because you have to mill the lumber. Uh, and they would actually would have sawmills, mostly ran hydraulically, you know, or, or hydro powered with rivers, streams, etc. Probably more commonly rivers than anything else. And essentially, the wheel would turn from water flow and it would move the saw blade and cut the lumber, well, the logs down. And that's more or less often how you would get wooden planks at the time period. Now, with that being said, with that being said, this could actually lead into some interesting, uh, how would you want to put it? Some interesting quest hooks, maybe. Why does suddenly the sawmill not work? Why is the water not flowing to the sawmill? So on and so forth. 
maybe something that you could build some quest on there for your Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Maybe a little sub quest, if you will. But with that being said, sawmills, large sawmill operations would be near a large waterway, more commonly than not, a river. And essentially they would they would actually get logs and they would mill them down and mill them into planks and other things of that nature. And then they those planks would actually be transported around. This is a this would be a quite expensive endeavor, actually, to make a wooden plank home. Now it wouldn't be the most expensive endeavor, which I'm going to get into one of the probably the top uh, endeavors when it comes to price tag, and that is actually brick. Brick construction was around. Brick construction is, God, who knows how old I, I haven't been able to get any sources that could confirm exactly how old brick making is but brick making is very old and was even around in the medieval period all throughout the medieval period i mean brick making is pre-medieval period essentially uh but it is also a very expensive endeavor and there's multiple reasons why the biggest one is just labor cost and it's it's very very time consuming so essentially what you have is is you would have someone maybe the mason it it could be you for all it matters if you're making the home yourself you would have a jig uh basically just a wooden box to make your bricks and you would fill that with mud and clay and water well you'd already have mud and clay and water and like a trowel and uh then you would fill your jig with the mud and clay mix and then essentially you would you would you'd tam it you'd pack it real tight and then you'd scrape off any access and then you would actually take and lay the bricks out on a flat surface in the sun to let them dry now with that being said this is only to begin to let them dry you can they would sit for roughly 48 to 72 hours is my understanding and this time period this time frame of your bricks would actually be very weather dependent you couldn't do this when it's colder in the year because there's a possible there's a risk that the brick would freeze you also wouldn't want to do this in the springtime because of the high possibility of rain you you'd want to do this when there's no chance of rain getting your bricks wet and essentially melting your bricks down now the next thing that would be done is once they're dry and started to solidify they essentially would stack the bricks up and kind of make a brick kiln if you will and Essentially, at that point, and usually we'd be built around lumber, uh, the the logs, lumber, whatever, and that would be used to, they would set that on fire and they would cook the bricks, essentially. They would bake the bricks, and that's how they would make the bricks itself. There's also multiple issues with this. Uh, if the bricks heat up too fast, the bricks will crack and break. If they don't heat up enough, they won't solidify and then you're going to have to reheat them again. There was also issues at this time period, in the medieval time period, where bricks would have inconsistency, and you would actually get multiple different colors of bricks. Uh, everything from kind of like a light orange color to a dark red. And essentially what that has, that has to do with a few different things. One, it has to do with the consistency of the mud used. You know, basically the amount of clay versus the amount of mud the next pro the next part of it is is how it was heated when the fire was lit to heat treat the bricks now the bricks would be used for many different things the bricks could be used for making roads which would be very uncommon in your villages even in your cities it would be pretty uncommon as cobblestone was more more common for making essentially roads or walkways whatever uh, bricks could be used for making fencing, things of that nature, and but the, the kind of the next thing that would be 
kind of a part of the issue with brick is, is brick would also need to be mortared. You couldn't just stack the bricks together and just go with the flow. You just, that's pretty much, that's another part of the labor is you would need knowledge, if you will, of making mortar and then stacking the bricks together. You'd need ways to be able to chisel brick if you need to chisel brick to cut it down to size, etc. So there was even more complexity after that. And more often than not, like when it came to the baking process, when it came to the making process, etc., a mason would actually come, like say a, say you live in a village if and your village didn't have a mason, you would have to pay for a mason to come to your village and actually treat the bricks because the mason would essentially know how it's done and Basically, well, ask your, you know, answer this question. Do you know how to make bricks? More than likely, no. Let alone, you may not even have the time to make the bricks because, like I said, it is a very time-consuming process. And this would be done during a time period where you'd want to be tending your cattle, tending your fields, etc. Now, the next thing I want to talk about for construction-wise is stack stone. Stack stone was actually another fairly common method of building things but more often than not it would be used for castle walls it would be used for castles themselves uh, defensive walls things of that nature Uh, not so much temples or, or chapels but yes temples and chapels would use stacked stone as well so that's something to think about now with stacked stone it's still a quite expensive endeavor. It still comes down to how much stone do you have within your area? Do you have a a, a stone quarry within the area? Uh, are you having the stone imported in, which can get extremely expensive for the for the medieval time period? Uh, as well as when you stack the stone, it, it's kind of like a puzzle where you got to kind of make the pieces fit together, and sometimes that involves chisel, you know. A hammer and chisel and other methods to kind of make the stone fit together and you know this is another process where you're going to have to pay someone to do this or more often than not would pay someone to do it for you as a, this is another job that would more than likely involve a mason to build and then of course you would also have mortar and stone type construction this is probably once once again this would be more than likely used for uh a lord's residence uh it could also a temple would be very commonly done in uh a mortared you know stone and mortar believe it or not not so much castle defense walls although you would see it for castles as well or you would see like a half and half where maybe like the lower part is kind of a a more mortar and stone construction and then it kind of goes up into a more stack stone construction. And a stack stone construction is actually uh, quite sturdy, believe it or not. Uh, a, a stack stone construction could actually sustain being hit by trebuchet or catapult. It's not like the movies were, oh, one, one boulder it's the wall from a catapult and it just falls over. It's not even stack stone is that fragile when it's done properly. Uh, but it all takes quite a bit of work because even here with this stone and mortar construction, as you can see, it is, it's kind of stacked in different methods to strengthen the wall even further, uh, especially from attacks such as from a catapult or a trebuchet. Next thing I want to talk about is roofs. And the main the first one I want to talk about here is probably going to be the more more common roof that you would see within a medieval European style setting within Dungeons and Dragons, and that is a thatch roof. The thatch roof was probably the most common and most dominant type of roof that you would see throughout the medieval period. Uh, it would be used by just about anybody. Uh, thatch roof is actually pretty effective roof, although it does have its flaws. You know, it, it's a high maintenance type of thing, but it's fairly cheap to make. 
uh, essentially what they would do is they would take stacks of straw, uh, could be water, weed, uh, water, reed, heather, or palm branches. There might be some other materials that I'm missing in there, but essentially what they would do is they would kind of bundle it up and they, they would roll it out over top of the structure of the roof. Now, with that being said, there was, there's multiple different types of ways that it would be layered and done. I really don't know all the ins and outs of thatch roofing. I more or less know the construction and know what it looks like when I see it. But I will show you an example here. Now, this is one example, and this would be a fairly common example of, of how a thatch roof would done be done. And essentially, they would it would it actually starts at the bottom and it works its way up, which is why you have that kind of overlapping look to the thatch roof itself. Now, that being said, if I understand it correctly, this is a non-shaved thatch roof. Don't quote me on that one. But then here you have another style of thatch roof, and this would be actually a shaven uh, thatch roof. So that's why it has a more smooth look to it, even though it is made of thatch. And this would actually be a fairly cheap, effective way of actually covering a home in the medieval period. However, they're not thatch is not the only way, probably just the most common, because you would also have wooden shingles. Now, wooden shingles would they kind of go through the same process with wooden shingles as you would making wooden planks. But there's other ways they could have made wooden shank, uh, wooden shingles as well. They they would have been able to use hand tools because they weren't as long. Wooden shingles would still be fairly common, I would say. However, with that being said, that this is probably going to be your more permanent, more important structures that would use uh, wooden shingles, especially in like your villages where wooden shingles wouldn't be as common. But maybe if you had an inn or uh, a, a maybe a, an extremely successful uh, blacksmith, they might have wooden shingles on their home. Uh, it would be used quite a bit by barons. It'd probably be more commonly used by barons or counts. But the shingles themselves, they could either be kind of rounded or they would be square like you see here. And they would also be treated with some type of tar or oil to help prevent the, you know, to, to help protect the wood itself from moisture. And when it comes to price tag, it, it's definitely more expensive than thatch. Probably not the most expensive, considering you would also have clay shingles. Now, the clay shingles would be made very similar to brick. Now, what you have here is you have a half round clay shingle. You would also see these type of shingles used in Asia as well, uh, but they were used in medieval Europe. They would also be, uh, they could also be flat instead of half rounded like these are. The But from what I've seen, looking at photographs, artist renders, etc., and what I can judge, uh, from various sources that actually half round shingles was the more common. Now these would be made in a very similar method to bricks. Uh, so they would have to be heat treated. They would have to be made in a mold, et cetera, et cetera. And they would actually be dried except for when they were dried, they would be dried on a jig to keep that half round shape. Um, but they, you, you run into many of the same problems with these as you would with the brick making. So these would definitely be something I would reserve for, say, a, a Count's Manor or some type of High Lord. Uh, maybe reserve it to cities. You know, maybe this is the most, you know, you know, maybe maybe the city in mind is like the Kingdom City and the building in mind is the most ritzy high end in you know it's it's the hilton of the inns in your world so maybe it would have wooden shing or uh, sorry not wooden shingles but clay shingles 
instead of maybe thatch or wooden shingles because like I said this is a more expensive method but it's still fairly common enough another one is also cobblestone this would be another more higher end expensive method of shingling a home but cobblestone would still be fairly common uh it, it would uh the, the the shingles themselves they could be either be kind of rounded at the one edge or they would be square or rectangular like as you can see here uh it would take special kind of mounting to do because you would actually have to put holes in the shingles themselves uh the this would be a very good method of doing it but once again it comes down to the resources uh does the local quarry have cobblestone are they making cobblestone shingles is a mason chiseling the shingles you know there's a lot there you have to consider when it comes to how the shingles are made and how often you would see this i would argue actually cobblestone you'd probably find more on your temples uh maybe the cane's personal residence if say the cane lived in a home or you know the the arch duke of the region might have cobblestone shingles maybe it's an older building of an extreme importance uh maybe you know and you know maybe maybe some type of high end trading company that's been around for a long period of time uh maybe their headquarters has stone shingles or uh sorry uh, cobblestone shingles so you would still see it but definitely nowhere near as much as thatch or wooden shingles and definitely nowhere near as much as clay but it would still be you you would still be able to find it fairly common enough in the more major cities if you will and probably that's probably where it should be restricted to is your more major cities whenever you're designing your world now i'm only going to take and quickly touch base with glass and mostly it's because this video is so long as it is and when it comes to glass glass is just not common uh, you might find glass at a high lord's residence. I even doubt lords, to be honest, or knights. Uh, maybe your barons or your archdukes. Um, still maybe not extremely common. You really wouldn't even see windows very, glass windows very commonly on castles, although some castles did have glass windows at that time period, from my understanding. Glass windows is more of something you would see on temples. And that's because glass was very expensive to make. With that being said, glass also would not be flat, large, flat panes of glass like what we see now. Instead, you'd see something more like what you see here, where it's kind of wavy, imperfect, uh, it would be within framing, like what you see here. Of course, the framing, th the framework itself, the metal framework, would have uh, various shapes and styles to it to add style to the glass. And essentially, my understanding is, is the glass is then melted into the framing itself. So the frame is made, and then the glass is melted into it. And then it's cooled. Now, with that being said, that's... It, this is something that was more commonly found on churches and in, in, in probably what would be found on your, your temples or chapels in the world, and not even all of them at that. Uh, you know, your poor monasteries, no, they're not going to have glass. So glass was actually quite rare or, or rarely used for windows, but I figured I would quickly touch base with glass itself. Anyway, folks, this has been a really long video, and I want to wrap it up at that. I didn't even think it was going to take this long to get through everything. Um, the plan is, is in the future, I am going to do another video covering castles. I'm not quite fully sure how I'm going to do that yet because I'm still working in the process of that. 
I know I want to show various different types of castles and castle construction. So that way it's something that you could think about when it comes to your medieval setting, how you want to design your castles, what your castles should look like. And actually what even constitutes as a castle, because I see actually quite a few misconceptions on what an actual castle is or, or what a, a castle really is and what people thinks a castle is. So you know what, you know, if you're interested in that, subscribe to the channel, like this video, share it around, all that stuff. But anyway, folks, I'm going to wrap this up now. Thank you very much for tuning in and listening to me rant about construction. But anyway, folks, have yourself a wonderful day.